Hi, have five minutes. Let's get messy. With the great changes that 2020 has brought us, I just really wanted to get messy and share a little bit of happiness with you. So I've pulled out a sheet of my marshmallow paper and I've primed it with some white gesso. It's thick and leaves a bit of a distressed look, but you'll see what I mean in a little bit. I ran out of black and white polka dot paper, unfortunately, so I made the next best thing, homemade. So I grabbed my Vicky Booten watercolors and the wide end of a chopstick because we have tons at home and I got to Dotton. I love these watercolors, but don't ever fly with them because it leaves them bursting right when you open them, which is what happened here. I also initially went for a symmetrical polka dot look, but I sneezed and that went out the window. I'm excited to use my Lindy's Gang, which are my favorite powdered watercolors. A one, because you don't run into the pressure problems because they're powder. Two, they're multifaceted, they're mixable, and they come in these cute little tubs that are easy to open, so you are able to use 100% of the product. And three, they are located in Washington, and I love supporting local. Today, I am documenting some photos of my husband and my daughter swinging together in the park. Getting her to enjoy the process of swinging has actually been a bit of a process in of itself because she is so amped up to get on the swing and then quickly changes her mind and just clings on to you for dear life. But this time she really trusted her dad and held on for the ride. And you can actually start to see the purple drawing in that distressed, worn look I was referencing to earlier. Another thing to mention about thicker white gesso is that essentially because I mean it's a protective layer between your paint and the paper you can't blot it up without taking like 90% of the color with it so to speed up the process I have plugged in my trusty tiny and powerful mini USB fan to my right for some reason I've been on a bit of a splatter kick lately, it's just so fun and I have found that the best splatters come from small brushes with lots of bristles and keeping them constantly wet. It also helps to, you know, pull out your craft mat before filming a video <laughs> instead of accidentally painting your furniture. And speaking of furniture, uh, you might notice that I am not working on my normal white desk. My craft room is normally upstairs, but since the outbreak, we've been working on building an epic double workstation downstairs. It's basically going to be an L-shaped desk using two calyx style units underneath, one that's a four cell and one that's a longer eight cell and we're going to build a custom tabletop to go on top of that. But in the meantime, while we build the tabletop and the custom doors to go underneath them, I've just been working on the calyx top, which if you're familiar with them, they're very tiny and they're very small, so it's a struggle, but it's been keeping me clutter free. I will definitely be excited once it's all done. By the way, most of this ephemera is from my Paper Issues monthly grab bags, which if you haven't checked them out, it's definitely worth a look. I believe it's about $60 for the cutest stuff. My favorite part is that it fills into my stash nicely without having to add an entire collection to my stash. I don't know if anyone out there can relate, but sometimes too much stuff can give me a bit of anxiety. It's made me pretty minimal with crafting, which I guess can be a good thing, right? So I'm just about finished with my page here. I hope you love it. I'm gonna give you a closer look here in a second. I just love how the bright colors turned out. Thank you so much for watching. Have a beautiful day. Hmm, what to watch now? Decisions, decisions. Hey, why not both?